welcome to today's video. Today we're going to look at Lord Cashman. So first of all, let's watch him make his contribution in the debate on Amendment 97ZA, moved by Lord Blencathra on the 10th of January 2022. I rise to speak against this amendment and would remind, uh, I think we should remind ourselves, when we talk about trans women and trans men, we are talking about men and women who have faced very difficult choices uh, about their identity and whom they believe themselves to be. Once they face that choice and decide to transition, the transition is a very lengthy process. And again, uh, is not undertaken lightly because as we have heard, and as is so often the case, it leads to gender reassignment. I, I occasionally go on Twitter and I have read the tweets and I have received messages from people who in relation to what we're discussing tonight have said that they, if they thought they were going to prison as a trans woman or a trans man, that they would rather commit suicide than face what they believed would be inhumane treatment within the United Kingdom prison service. My laws, we have to deal with these fears. We're being asked to deal with fears on both sides of this argument, and I want us to deal with both of them equally. The balancing of rights always poses for us the greatest problem. But I believe the Ministry of Justice, in its policy on assessing trans prisoners, has got it absolutely right. It is late, my lords. We have other important work to do. So I will begin to wind up, but I wish to associate myself wholeheartedly with the comments of Lord, the, the noble and learned Lord Hope and the noble and learned Lord Panic. I could go through the policy section by section as to why I believe it's right. I'm not going to do that, my lords. Uh, but if your Lordships wished to return to it, I would so do. I will finish on, on these reflections. This amendment, even though it has been placed in good faith and, as the mover said, with good intention, deeply concerns me because it perpetrates the stereotype of trans women and trans men as sexual predators, full stop, as a threat to other women and indeed trans men uh, as a threat to the wider society. It also, I believe, as was said in an earlier debate in relation to the previous amendment, it creates further inequalities, my lords. It does not reduce them. So, uh, Lord Cashman is well known to those of us who have followed gay politics or watched EastEnders um, through the 90s um, because he was involved in both things. So, Lord Cashman is a misogynist, as we can see from his speech uh, where he talks about um, the fact that, you know, making a decision to become transgender is a very difficult and personal decision that we must support and uh, he reports this kind of emotional manipulation of other people as if it is an argument so he says that he has heard that trans women or trans men would rather commit suicide than face inhumane treatment within the uk prison service and by inhumane treatment he means being housed with members of the same biological sex or in a specific unit designed to meet the needs of people with a cross-gender identification without impinging on the rights of other prisoners to single-sex spaces. And for trans men, additionally, there are no trans men in men's prisons. There is absolutely no plan to ever put a trans man in a man's prison because it would be incredibly unsafe. 
incredibly unsafe. So it's a completely disingenuous statement to claim that he's acting for both trans women and trans men. This is a men's sexual rights movement. This is a movement led by men, advancing for the rights of men to come at the expense of women. The rights of men to inhabit women's prison estate comes at the expense of the rights of those women to a single sex space. Sometimes rights are pie, as Maya Forstater pointed out. Lord Cashman is um, very concerned with the historical um, situation that uh, gay men particularly found themselves in when um, gay men were persecuted by various pieces of legislation which have now been thankfully revoked. Similarly, the offences that were listed related to men in the military who were developing relationships with each other. It's interesting that in these arguments, Lord Cashman seems to recognise biological sex as an actual thing because he refers to biological sex in, the, in terms of a sexual orientation many times over. It's very interesting. So uh, he is, uh, he intervenes in defence of free speech. I also believe that free speech is a very important principle, legally, socially, morally. Um, I do not believe that people who are defending the rights of people to transgender are in the position of the witches of Salem. I do not believe that the harassment of women saying no um, is equivalent to being sent uh, sexualized images, being sent rape threats and death threats and all of these things that are, you know, sadly fairly standard for women uh, who were engaged in these debates uh, and not recognised as the trauma that they are actually trauma that, that, that they're putting you through. He has the gall to speak in the House of Lords in the same week that we had all of this um, information about the girl guides in the news. He has the gall to talk about uh, organisations that support trans equality, such as the girl guides are attacked and piled onto because they support LGBT plus equality. That's not what's going on. Oh, and he also, he also claims that, you know, by discussing these things in, in Parliament, we are whipping up threats. It's deeply toxic. It's dangerous territory. Uh, grab controversy. Attack and diminish the history of the 30s. I mean, you know, this is such a, an emotive use of language. Um, the misrepresentation, defamation and dehumanisation reported in the media regurgitated in bars and whispered on the streets as she walks along them. I wonder what it must be like to live with that hatred daily. He does not recognise the freedom of speech that is afforded in law to women to resist this intrusion into our rights. He intervened in the debate about Kathleen Stock to claim that, uh, to, to put on the record that um, if, you, if you have a gender critical belief, you're not allowed to um, misgender somebody for no, for no good reason. The revisionism is extraordinary. Michael Cashman was involved in Stonewall, so he, he was central in that fight. And um, he claims now that uh, it was always an LGBT plus endeavour. You know, it wasn't. It was an LNG endeavour. And as uh, Levi Pay uh, intervened with some tweets talking about how when he worked at Stonewall in the 90s, that was when there was a discussion about adding the B. They were so far from adding anything else. Um, it's not, it's not okay. It's not okay. I mean, you know, I disagree with this Levi Pay person because he thinks that Stonewall should have adopted the T. I do not think that Stonewall should have adopted the T. I think that Stonewall should have moved its um, field of endeavour to ensuring uh, gay equality around the world rather than um, take on another cause in this country. But it was very lucrative and that's why they did it. 
So that's an update uh, of the uh, intervention by Lord Cashman. Uh, write to him if you please. Um, if you don't want to write to him, I wouldn't blame you. He is not going to uh, change his mind on this position. He has taken a political stance, a very conscious political stance. He has always advocated for the rights of gay men. He has never advocated for the rights of lesbians. And he certainly isn't going to advocate for the rights of other women. Um, so I, I, would, I would say spend your energy on somebody that is more persuadable or showing gratitude to somebody that has spoken up for women. It's a much more productive use of our time. Thanks for joining me for the video today. Please like, subscribe, share the love. Uh, if you'd like to support this work, you can find my PayPal details in the video description and I'll see you again soon.